Hi folks, Daryl Legacy here, Instructional Designer at Hack. This video will show you how to set up special access for quizzes and Dropbox assignments in D2L. This can be used to give students with accommodations extended time on tests or allow absent students to take a test early or late. Some students with accommodations may need to be able to start a Dropbox paper or project days or weeks early. And you can also use this to give access after the semester ends to a student working on finishing an incomplete grade. Special access in D2L is essentially just a way of modifying or removing restrictions on dates, times, or number of attempts allowed for one or several students without changing them for other students. Let's start by looking at a quiz that I've already created in D2L. When you click on the Restrictions tab, you can see any limits you've already made. It's worth briefly going over a few of these options because they can be confusing. The start date and time is when students can actually begin taking the quiz. However, before that start date, students will still see the name of the quiz and the general details, such as when it opens and how much time they will have to take it. If it's a pop quiz, or there's some other reason that you don't want students to know it's coming, make sure to click the Hide from Users button at the top. The due date displays to students, and if you click the Display in Calendar button, it will show up in their calendar on the course homepage. There's no reason not to display it in the calendar unless it's a small assignment and you don't want to clutter their calendar. It's important to note that the due date doesn't have any material effect. Students can still take the quiz or submit to the Dropbox after that date, though D2L will show you that it's late. The only way to entirely close a quiz or Dropbox so that students can't keep submitting is to set an end date. The end date and due date can be the same if you don't want students to be able to submit at all after the deadline. Or the end date can be sometime after the due date if you want there to be a period where students can submit late for a reduced score after which it's no longer possible to submit or take the quiz. We've set a start date and our end date and due date are the same. Scrolling down, you have the option to set a time limit. The recommended time limit works much like the due date above and won't actually stop students from working on their quiz. If you want a hard limit on how much time students have, you need to select the enforced time limit option. The grace period is a short amount of time during which D2L will warn students that their time is almost up and that they must submit soon. It can be as short as one minute, though the default five minutes is a better choice in most cases. You also have to choose what happens when the time limit and grace period are exceeded. The top option does nothing but mark the attempt as late. The middle option prevents them from continuing to answer any questions, though they still need to manually submit it. The last option lets them keep working but marks it as a zero. You can see that we've chosen to give the students an enforced time limit of 120 minutes with a five minute grace period and stop them from continuing to work after that limit is reached. Now that we've set some restrictions, we can use special access to bypass those restrictions for certain students. Let's say we have a student who is allowed double time on tests because of an accommodation through student access services. We can come down to the bottom of the page and make sure the allow selected users special access to this quiz radio button is selected. Click add users to special access. You can now change any restrictions for the students you are about to select. In our case, we need to click enforced time limit again under timing. Our student is supposed to get double time on tests, so change 120 minutes to 240. There's no reason to change the grace period time or the exceeded time behavior. Scroll down to the list of students and check the box next to the student or students you want this new time limit to apply to, and click Add Special Access. That's it. If you want to double check, scroll to the bottom of this restrictions page and you'll see that student's name and their unique time limit. What if a student wasn't available during some or all of the dates the quiz was open and you wanted them to be able to take it early or late? In that case, click the Add Users to Special Access button again, but this time just adjust the dates and times at the top. 
Say you wanted them to have the same number of days as other students, but you wanted theirs to start two days early. Just change their start date, due date, and end date without changing the timing section. Select their name at the bottom and click Add Users to Special Access. If you have a student with an incomplete who needs access after the semester ends, you may want to click the second radio button in the Type of Access section. This makes it so that only the student or students you're about to add will even see this quiz. It will keep other students from being able to come back and see questions or answers if you're worried about them sharing it with future students. Then you just click Add Users to Special Access and it will warn you that until you add students to special access, no one can see it. Change the dates and add your student or students at the bottom as normal, and now your student will be the only one who can see and work on this quiz. Lastly, let's look at adding special access to a Dropbox assignment. Go to your Dropbox assignment and click the arrow and Edit Folder. Go to the Restrictions tab, and it works just the same as the Quiz Restrictions area except there's no timing option. If you have date restrictions set, you can add special access and change those dates for any student or students that you want to have less, more, or just different time to work on and submit to this folder. That's it for special access. There's a good chance you'll need to give at least one student special access to get around your restrictions, so it's worth checking it out to see how it works. If you have any questions, contact me or someone else on the CDI team.